Hello. Hello. I'm back, folks. Back with another Emacs video for you. This one's another one for all of you writers out there, all of your people, all of you people with aspirations to write the great American novel or short story, or maybe you want to write your own science fiction fantasy epic in the style of a George R.R. R. Martin or a um, a Harlan Ellison or a Robert Heinlein. And you're wondering, well, what's the best way to go about doing that, technically speaking? There's all different uh, theories and processes around sitting down to write your great work of fiction or even a nonfiction manuscript. But technically, what's the best way to do that in Emacs? In general, I'd probably recommend org mode, but for people who are really serious and really crazy, want to do something totally out there, why not use Emacs as a typewriter? Yes, when I was a teenager, I got a typewriter for my birthday because I loved the idea of printing what I was thinking directly onto the page and hearing, feeling the, the tactile feedback of the keys and the, the, the keys smacking against the platen of the, of the typewriter and the, um, the ink ribbon and the bell that would ding when you hit the margin and you slide the carriage back. The whole thing, uh, you can't really emulate that in Emacs exactly but you can get pretty close with using a little bit of LaTeX and a package in Emacs called Octec, A-U-C-T-E-X, uh, which is pretty easy to install. It's in the default ELPA package manager. You just have to do, you know, package install and search for Octec. Um, let's just do that really quick. Uh, package install and then just name the package. I already have it installed, so it's not going to work, but you would put in Octec here and then just hit enter and it should install. And I believe if you restart Emacs, anytime you open a LaTeX file, it'll use Octec. Octec. But if not, um, just check the, the documentation. I'm sure it'll tell you how to do it. But let's go ahead and do it. Um, I haven't prepared anything uh, for this, but uh, I just knew it would be a uh, fun topic to, to jump into. So we're going to create a temp file. Let's just call it, uh, you know, manuscript.tech. All right. So here we've got a LaTeX file. Um, this is your boilerplate. Um, SFFMS is the name of the LaTeX package that does what we're about to do. And uh, you can change this. This is the default settings for a a basic manuscript for ideally for a short story. Um, it'll have your your you know your address and your your word count and everything in the header, and then it'll have a title, your byline, and then the text. And uh, basically, there's there's a lot you can do with this package. Um, you can actually switch it to to novel and do a few other things. Uh, when you have a scene break, for example, you do new scenes, like some stuff like that that you just want to to know how to do. So um, I'll I'll drop a link to the documentation, but basically, all you have to do is um, is start writing. Once you have this boilerplate in here, uh, your document class is using, of course, the SFFMS package. Uh, the author is me. Uh, you put your surname because it'll um, it'll put that in the in the, the heading on each, um, according to the standard manuscript format. Uh, we could talk all day about what, what standard manuscript format was, uh, but basically I believe some publishers um, and, and magazines still accept manuscripts printed in standard manuscript format. Uh, like, like I remember one guy I knew used to say like, oh, isn't it ridiculous that computers still have that ridiculous courier font the, the, or typewriter fonts? And um, he didn't understand that there's a reason for that is because you still need to use a, a type, a monospace traditional typewriter font to submit a manuscript. Um, at least that's the way it was a few years ago. I don't know if that's changed now. And if like all magazines are doing things through email or some other 
form. But I believe even if um, the place you're sending a manuscript still accepts um, or is accepting digital submissions, I believe they still want like a, a Microsoft Word document or some kind of document in standard manuscript format. But anyway, that is that is that is way beyond the topic of what we're doing here. Let's just get some example text so that we can see what this looks like. Because uh, this is going to blow your mind, I think, actually, when you, when you see this. Uh, let's just get some some text to throw in here. Um, maybe we'll get some uh, we'll get some HP Lovecraft. That'll be fun. Okay, so we've got we've got a little Dunwich Horror right here. Let's let's drop that in really quick. Okay. So this was actually, I believe this was a, a novella, but we're just getting some example text here. All right. So um, here, H.P. Lovecraft has got these wonderful long paragraphs here, um, but we won't worry about that. Let me just print this out so you can see what it looks like. So in Octech, I believe it's Control-C, Control-A. Yeah, it'll do your LaTeX on the back end, and boom, here's your manuscript. It was that easy. See that you went from just some some plain text and LaTeX to now having an actual standard manuscript formatted manuscript that you can print out and send to a publisher. There's a few things here to note, though. This is not um, a complete address. I believe you might want to put your email and phone number as well uh, if, you, if you're submitting this to to a magazine, for example. Um, you might want to put in a more accurate word count. This does a little bit of math based on the font pitch, and so it does some kind of logic to kind of estimate your word count. Um, but if you have a more accurate word count, you can actually put that into the put that into the file. Um, I believe right down here you could do word count and um, see what I'm typing. Let's just say I don't know 500. And save that, print out your manuscript again, control C, control A. I'm actually close. I'm using the events PDF reader here. Let's actually kill that buffer and print it out again. Uh, so now you see I've got 500 words up there. The other thing is, of course, here there's two different titles. There's the title you put in under the the, the normal title um, declaration here in LaTeX. So let's change that to the, the Dunwich Horror. And uh, there's a thing called a running title, which if you look back at the document here, it's what goes in the header. It's typically, it's it's an abbreviated version of your title. So let's just say, I don't know, you know, Dunwich is fine. And uh, now, um, oh, that's nice. So the, the events PDF reader actually, it, it reloaded the file for us. So I didn't have to close the buffer. So that's cool. Um, and pour over the documentation for the, I always get it wrong, it's the SFFMS LaTeX package because it's got a few things in there you want to know, like like the basics, of course, your, your M dashes are three dashes in a row, just like in org mode. Um, it automatically will give two spaces at the end of a, of a sentence, which is, which is fine. Um, my my manuscript here, I believe, is using the. Um, it's it's not the courier font. I don't think I have that installed in my operating system here. So it's using the default um, LaTeX monospace font, which is it's fine with me. I don't, I don't mind that at all. Um, so I'm probably not going to bother to change that. So one thing you'll notice here, which is depending on how how um, how strict the editor is you're sending this to, let's say you put this in quotes here. So this is using LaTeX quotes, which when you export them, um, so notice um, so yeah, the Octech package in Emacs, I believe, it it doesn't let you, it automatically converts the, the dumb quotes. Um, you know, like, a so if you try to do regular quotes, you don't get regular quotes, you get two of these um, like back ticks, I'm not sure what those are, which LaTeX converts as smart quotes. So you can, there. Um, you know, there's a left quote and a right quote. 
but most um so actually let's let's see what that looks like here when we go back into the manuscript um you see so that there's your left quotes there's your right quotes you can see that that's that's something that is not conventionally or traditionally done in a manuscript because typically in the old days these were produced on typewriters so you you would have just a regular quote two two lines they would be identical you wouldn't have left and right there is um so there is an option i believe to make those dumb quotes let's try it i think you you go up here to the document class and in brackets not uh, not um not curly brackets regular brackets i believe you put dumb see if we don't get any errors okay okay that fixed it <laughs> okay so yeah if you do the dumb option but the the documentation warns you that this can mess with um depending on how you have other quotes rendering in the document so um use it with with caution but um read the documentation and see what it says um i'm gonna keep playing with it and see what happens but yeah so now you have proper <laughs> proper dumb quotes that you would see on a typewriter and by dumb it means just there's no distinguishing left and right they're just straight like you'd see on a typewriter um uh so um this is this is a sacrilege putting my name on the, on hp lovecraft's work but uh, ignore that um yeah and you see how it, it put my surname in the running title here and not my full name because as we as we put up here um, you 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 gave your surname as as an option up here in this uh, this declaration, mainly uh, for use in the running title, which is right there. Um, and of course, put your put your real address or PO box um, in in LaTeX. These two backslashes um, are a line break, so you could put you know email uh, example.com. Let's see what that looks like in our in our manuscript. Let's go back. Um, yeah, so you can you can put in your email there as well. They might want that in your phone number. Um, so let's see. Um, I believe that's that's really all you need to start writing a manuscript and using Emacs as your typewriter. Um, yeah, it would be fun to show the, the the novel. Basically, the the only difference with the novel, I think, is that it, it gives you a cover page and it allows you to do um, chapters. So you could do it uh, a, a LaTeX chapter, and if you don't name it, I believe it just numbers chapter one, chapter two. Um, you can do it so that it doesn't say chapter. You can just like whatever you put in the, you know, uh, you know the beginning or whatever whatever you you name the chapter you can get it to not show the chapter option all of that is covered in the documentation and of course i believe to do that in regular brackets you just put novel up here in the document class uh that's um i'm not going to go ahead and you know go all the way that far to show you this this is just just a quick video to show you that this is the closest thing you can get to using Emacs as your typewriter to produce what look like the closest thing you'll get to typewritten manuscripts that you can go ahead and print out. Um, even if you're not sending something that you've written to a to a publisher, um, I find that whatever whatever you're writing, even if it's just going to the web, uh, when you're writing anything. Being able to read it back on paper and make handwritten corrections is um, it. I think it's it's very helpful. And standard manuscript format is designed for the purpose of being really easy to read. Look, you see how it's it's double spaced. It's a monospace font. You can you have plenty of room to write notes in the margins. There's a reason why for many years it was it was the industry standard way to submit writing to an editor because it makes your editor's job much easier so especially if you're editing yourself why not make it as easy as possible and have the absolute best reading experience for reading and critiquing your work now how this works for like academic um writing uh, i don't know i assume you have all the latex stuff still available like footnotes and citations and all of those things but if you're just writing something for fun and you want to read it back or send it to a friend, um, you do yourself and your readers a favor by putting it in beautiful, readable, standard manuscript format. 
And that's it. I think we'll leave it there. Thanks again. I will just make a quick note that um, for anyone who uh, has left um, some nice comments on my other videos, I'm going to be, I think, answering those in uh, my next live stream, which I think I'll be doing Saturday mornings. I think Saturday mornings um, are a good time to do some of those those nice, enjoyable, relaxing, bring coffee live streams. So thanks for watching. See you all next.